Hello, fellow fabricators. In this video, we're going to explore how we can use Microsoft Fabric to validate files early in the lifecycle. We will be working on the Titanic Diagnostic Analytics data product. This adopts a medallion architecture to ingest, process, and project the data by promoting it through the bronze, silver, and gold areas of the lake. The purpose of this data product is to create a Power BI report that allows users to interactively explore the Titanic data. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on processing data that has already been ingested to the bronze area of the lake. So we're aiming to load, validate, clean, and standardize the data before writing it to the silver area of the lake. In this series, we want to show how Fabric can deliver important data ops principles. So we're going to take the opportunity to show how we can validate the data and then alert relevant people within the organization if data validation issues are encountered. We all know the saying, rubbish in, rubbish out. So the principle here is to enforce a data contract that sets clear expectations around the quality of the data we will accept into our pipeline. In this case, we're going to use a Fabric notebook, importing a popular Python package called Great Expectations. And we're going to use that to define and apply a set of data quality rules. We will then deliberately introduce some bad data to show how we can detect and then drop the bad rows before writing the good rows to the silver area of the lake. The process is orchestrated using a fabric pipeline and we'll use new Teams activity in fabric pipelines to show how you can alert the relevant people in the organization using Teams and provide them with detailed information about the validation issues. So let's get in to the demo. So here we are in Microsoft Fabric. We've opened the Titanic Diagnostic Analytics workspace. A workspace is where you can gather all of the artifacts related to a specific data product. So looking in this particular workspace, you can see we've got some pipelines, which we use to orchestrate the end-to-end -end process. We've got some notebooks, which contain our core data engineering logic. We've got the bronze, silver, and gold lake houses that we talked about. And then finally, the Power BI semantic model and report that we're presenting to end users. Now in this demo, we're specifically interested in the validate location notebook. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. One feature in Fabric that we find really useful is the interactive table of contents. It's driven by any headings that you have in markdown cells throughout your notebook. So you've got level heading one, two, three, and so on, drives a hierarchy that you can see here on the right-hand side. So you can see this very, a very high level describes the stages that we're going to apply in the notebook. So the purpose of the notebook is to validate the locations data. And it's this very simple spreadsheet that we've already landed on the bronze area of the lake. Now, this is quite typical in, in data projects. You've got your core operational data. So in this case, we've got our passenger data from the Titanic, There's thousands of rows of data in it. And one of the columns records the location where the passenger boarded the Titanic. And it's a single uppercase character. So it's not very helpful when you're presenting this information in a report. So the purpose of this spreadsheet is to basically decode that single letter, letter code to make it more useful. And so you can see here, we are recording a kind of more helpful name for the location. So you can see the ship stopped, started at Southampton in England, then it stopped in France at Cherbourg to pick up more passengers, and then finally Queenstown in Ireland uh, before crossing the Atlantic. We're also using this reference uh, spreadsheet to gather uh, the longitude and latitude for each of those locations so that we can plot, plot them on, on a map in Power BI, and you'll see that later on. Uh, finally, you can see that we've, we've also added a sort of extra row of data here that's invalid. The, the longitude is well out of range uh, for a longitude, 
and the, the embark code is three letters when it should be just a single uppercase character. So this row is a bad, represents a bad row of data. So we want this notebook to load the data, apply our sort of data contract to the spreadsheet and reject this bad row of data. So let's see that in action. So we can see the process here on, on the right hand side. We are going to create some expectations, load the data into Panda's data frame, apply our expectations to that data. If we detect any bad records, we're going to remove them. Then we're going to write remaining clean records to the lake. And then finally, we're going to exit the notebook, but providing detailed context of any validation issues that were encountered. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So in terms of setting up, we're running a couple of utility notebooks that contain code that we're using across other areas of our solution. The first is a helper to help us set up great, the great expectation suite and then deal with the, the output from the validations that we run using our expectations. And then the second notebook helps us to set up our logging. So here we are setting up a connection to log, anal log analytics in Azure. And that allows us to centrally capture all of our uh, logging uh, to support that observability data ops principle that we talked about earlier. So now we're into the core function of our notebook. We're going to validate locations. So we set up an expectation suite. We give it a name. And now we're able to create individual expectations. Now at this stage, we're not running the expectations. We're simply configuring them as a set of rules that build up to create our data contract. So the first rule is around checking that all four columns are present in the spreadsheet that we're expecting to be there. The next rule checks that there are at least three columns in the data. So we're applying some domain knowledge here. We know that the Titanic visited three locations, so we should expect three rows, at least three rows in the data. We then check that the uh, longitude and the latitude are in acceptable ranges. So there's clear limits to those uh, based on the world being a globe. And finally, we can see here that we check that the, the actual embark location code is a single uppercase character. We, we do that using a regex expression. And throughout all of these expectations, you can see that we've used this sort of metadata to capture additional useful information that we can play back to end users should any of these expectations fail. And you'll see that in action later on. So now we've got our contract set up, we can now start to apply it. So we load the data from the bronze area of the lake, the, the spreadsheet that I showed you has already been ingested and landed on the lake. So we can use pandas to read the, the data from that Excel sheet. We can log any exceptions along the way because we've got our logger now set up and we can display that data. So you can see here, it's faithfully loaded all four rows of data from that spreadsheet. We can then apply our data contract, our expectations to that data frame. So we pass the data frame to great expectations and ask it to validate that data. And you can see it's a it's applied the validation process here. One of the outputs from that process is a list of indexes or row, row indexes in the data frame that have failed validation. So we can use that to remove those invalid rows and therefore generate a clean set of data. So you can see here that we've, we've got three clean rows of data. Uh, we've removed that bad row of data from, from the location information. So we're now in a position to write that data to the lake house. But we do that by using Spark, the Spark engine in Fabric. Uh, we create a Spark data frame from a pandas data frame, and we use the Delta format to write to lake house table. So we're, we're writing the data in a structured way using a standard format, which is Delta into the lake house so that we can then use it downstream. And you can see here, we're using the overwrite mode. So we're not appending the data here. We're just basically, we've got a new reference data set and we're, we're overwriting anything that was in that table with this new data set. And you can see here we're, we're logging that we've written those three rows to the lake house. 
And then the final stage in the notebook is to um, pass from the notebook to any pipeline that's called a notebook, a JSON object that describes the results of that validation process. So you can see overall here that we've recorded success status of fail or false because it hasn't gone 100% successfully. We've summarized that one of four rows was dropped due to validation issues. And then finally, in the de details element of this JSON object, we're passing back an HTML table, which itemizes all the validation issues. So the next stage is for us to go over to the pipeline that calls us notebook to see how we can deal with this exit information that we're passing back. So here we are back in the workspace. We've been looking at the validate location notebook. And, and if we inspect the lineage for this notebook, we can see that it's triggered by the process to silver pipeline. Now, if we open up the pipeline, we can see that it runs two notebooks, the process locations notebook that we've been looking at, and also the process passengers notebook. And you can see both follow the same pattern. What's happening here is that the, the notebook is run and the pipeline is then catching that exit value that's returned by the notebook. And that's used to drive this if condition. So if we drill into that in a bit more detail, we can see that the expression here picks up from the exit value, that success element, which is in the JSON object. And this is a Boolean value. So it's set to true or false, and that's used then to drive the subsequent action. So if it's false, we know there's been a data validation issue. So if we look at that condition here, false, we can see we're using the new Teams pipeline activity, which is available in Fabric. And we're using that to dynamically raise a Teams message. So again, we're plucking elements out of that JSON object. So the details element is used to form the body of the Teams message. And the title element from the JSON object is used to set the subject of the Teams message. And we know that the body is a um, HTML table. So the, the body of the message needs to be a sort of HTML uh, document and it renders that. So let's go over and have a look at how that appears in Teams. This is how that team message appears. This approach creates a fast feedback loop. The team who are responsible for this reference data are immediately notified when validation issues are encountered. And they're also provided with sufficient information to address those issues. But one word of caution, in the table that forms the body of this team's message, we have chosen here to show the data that caused the validation checks to fail. In some cases, this may not be appropriate if there is a risk of exposing confidential or personal information. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to look in more depth at the processing we do before projecting the data to the gold layer of the lake. From a data ops perspective, we're going to look at how we can put tests in place to prove our notebook-based data engineering logic is working as intended. So please don't forget to hit like if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to keep following our content. Thanks for watching.